Hello, everybody. Happy March. In my previous video, I asked you all to ask me the questions you want to know about Sebastian so I can answer them for you in honor of Rare Disease Day, but also just as a general information on our channel. Two things. Nala is screeching away. I tried to move into the piano room so it would be a little bit less noise. And second, if you can hear Sebastian, he just woke up from a nap and he is not very happy. He doesn't want me to hold him. He keeps fighting me when I try to hold him. He doesn't want to roll on the floor. Sometimes he takes a nap and he wakes up super, super happy and he's very content. And other times he wakes up and he's very crabby and he needs like a good 20, 30 minutes to wake up. Today seems like one of those days where he just kind of needs to work it out on his own. He's right here, right next to me. I'm literally looking at him. So if you hear him crying in the background, I'm sorry, but also know that he's fine. He, he does not want me. You good, Nala? I don't know if you guys have looked at this video that I posted before this. There are over almost 500 comments on that video. So I may have to break this portion um, of these videos into one or two videos. I'm gonna try to not do that and just put it all into one. But again, I don't want people to feel like I answered some questions and not other questions, but there's a lot to go through. <sighs> Getting right into it. Some people still ask how old Sebastian is, and I think that those are maybe the newer people to our channel and just see how small he is, but see that he kind of has more mature features, so that's maybe a little bit confusing. Sebastian is five, five years old. A lot of people also wonder if we knew about his syndrome before he was born. No, we did not. And I would say that almost like 90% of the families that I know and we have met like through the internet and the CDLS Foundation, most of them are birth diagnosis. I feel like in the past I have maybe read that the genetic information related to CDLS is really hard to detect when the baby is still in utero. So I'd say like nine out of 10 children that are born with CDLS, and this is not factual, so I guess don't quote me on this, but just from experience and people that I've talked to, like almost all babies with CDLS are birth diagnosed babies. One of the other most common questions we get asked is do we wanna have more kids? Yes. I feel like I was born to be a mom. I love being a mom. It's my favorite thing. I, I love being a mom. So yeah, I would like to have more kids. It's just hard. If it were up to me, I'd have like six, but that, you know, there's always going to be a time in the future where Sebastian's going to be back in the hospital. So I do have to think like if I have more kids, where are they going to be when he's in the hospital and figure out how to split my time up. So it is a loaded question. We do have help. So, you know, I know we would be okay, but yes, I would like to have at least one more kid. And having answered that, people wonder if this same syndrome could also be passed on to our future children. And chances are probably not. And the reason that I say that is because Cornelia DeLange syndrome is defined as a freak genetic mutation. So it's not like sometimes certain certain syndromes in children, it's like the one parent carries a certain gene and the other parent carries a certain gene and when they cross it causes that mutation. That's not the case for us or for Sebastian. If you look up the de definition, excuse me, of CDLS, it is literally defined as a freak genetic mutation. It's just something that happened. So should we choose to have more children in the future? There's a wonderful, great, hopeful chance that they probably will not have this same syndrome. It's just a freak thing that happened. Okay, moving on to a couple of other questions that I think people wonder all the time and don't really ever often ask, or sometimes you do. Um, they've been asked before and I've answered them before, but a lot of people wonder what Sebastian's future looks like. Like, is he ever going to walk? Is he ever going to talk? What happens when he's 25 and he is bigger? Like, what's, what's life gonna look like? And the truth is those questions are really hard to answer because this syndrome affects children, young adults and adults so differently. There is such a large spectrum of how the syndrome affects children. There's a possibility that Sebastian could walk. There is a possibility that he could talk. There's a possibility that one day he won't need a feeding tube and he can eat all of his food and get all of his calories by the food that we mix up for him. Do I ever think that he's gonna take a bite out of pizza and be able to chew and swallow that? To be very honest with you, probably not. That's probably not going to happen, but that doesn't mean that one day he can't have like chicken, rice, and veggies all mixed up. He just had that for lunch today or certain things mixed up and that is his 
feeds throughout the day where the feeding pump wouldn't be a requirement as long as he's getting enough calories by oral feeds. So will he be able to eat without the feeding pump one day? Probably. I think that we could eventually get there. As far as walking and talking, we literally don't know. And that kind of leads me into my next point really quickly. I just wanted to say a lot of you on here actually know of another child with CDLS. We have not met them in person. We have not met another family in person who has a family member diagnosed with CDLS. But some of you have commented about a sweet little three-year-old named Freya. I have spoken with Freya's mom just through text message. We were actually supposed to set up a call yesterday, but things got a little crazy here. We had someone working. I was doing taxes, a couple of other things. So Marcy, if you're watching this, I promise we're gonna touch base. And I don't wanna share too much about Freya right now because I haven't talked to Marcy in person and just kind of clarified what it's okay to say. But I just wanted to say that I feel like a lot of people leave comments on our page about Freya and vice versa, leaving comments on Freya's page about Sebastian and kind of comparing the two. And I love that you have found both Sebastian and Freya and you get to see their differences. But I hope that that makes you kind of understand how the syndrome affects children differently. Freya, I feel like just from the little couple of videos that I've seen, like she has better posture. She can sit up a little bit more and assisted than Sebastian. She kind of intentionally reaches for things more. So I, I don't want to get too much into it, but the syndrome affects children so, so differently. Every single case of CDLS looks different for every single person. So I see a lot of comments sometimes like, why isn't Sebastian walking? Like I follow another child with CDLS who's walking and they're going to school and they're talking and they have like total complete awareness and they're making full sentences. Like why is Sebastian not like that? Sometimes insinuating like we're not doing enough, um, but it's not always like that. But I have received comments like basically like, what are you guys doing wrong? Cause this kid can walk. And again, it's just the syndrome affects every single person differently. So it's really honestly hard to know if Sebastian's ever gonna be able to walk or talk. We're gonna keep him in therapy and keep pushing for that, but unfortunately, I we won't know. I guess we're gonna watch and look for that milestone together. <laughs> Also, I'm just reading a comment right now. I hope it's okay to say your name, but Susan Smith, she said, you're such a nice person. I asked you a couple questions the other day and then felt really bad because I thought I overstepped or was insensitive and I just felt bad. Susan, I want you to know that you should never, ever, ever feel bad. It seems like you are respectful and I feel like I remember your name. So I feel like anytime anybody has a question, as long as you're nice about it, I don't mind answering. You'll never ask too much. So I just want to put that out there. I'm literally just reading through the comments right now and I saw that one. And I just wanted to let you know that I assume you were nice about it. And if you were nice about it, please don't feel bad about asking anything. Seriously. This is another good question um, by Tammy M. She said, I look forward to your videos. I guess my question is how do you and Gio keep your, health, your relationship healthy? Medical issues, financial, and even day-by-day -day things. That is a great question. I feel like Gio and I have always just had a really good understanding of each other's needs and how we need to process things. I am a crier. I am an em em empath, excuse me. I feel everything so deeply. And Gio is the type of person where he gets presented with something, he processes it and he moves on. And when we were first parents, you know, new parents, I should say, there were times that that bothered me that I felt like he was ignoring emotions or he wasn't processing things or just kind of like brushing things off. But we've come to learn that we just process things differently and that's what works for our relationship. Like if we get a piece of information about Sebastian, I may go home and cry about it and Gio's just like, okay, let's figure out what we got to do. So as silly and as simple as it sounds, open communication with your partner is the most beneficial thing you can do during a stressful time. As far as financial stuff, um, it's been, it, that's been hard only because I had to quit my job to stay home with Sebastian. And you know, I used to be able to go to the gym and I used to be able to do all of this stuff. Like when we first met, we both went to the gym. We both worked, we both had separate kind of lives. Um, and we both brought something into the family. And now that I think I've been home for two years with Sebastian, I had a little bit of resentment. Like you still get to go to work and see other human beings and you still get to go to the gym. And I've come to learn that that's just how we had to make things work. It's a blessing that I get to stay home and raise Sebastian. He's not with strangers all day. He's not with a random nurse from a nursing company. He's not with a, but he's with me. 
and it is a gift that Gio is able to work a job that he is able to fully provide for our family. And now that I'm making a little bit of money in my photography and elsewhere, I'm able to contribute. And I feel like the financial stress that, I don't want to say it was never stressful. I think just accepting like, okay, and it's so silly to say, but like you get the luxury of going to work every day and seeing humans and having the normalcy of getting up and having a schedule. And it's funny because some people are like, man, I'd love to stay home all day, right? But there is a sense of loss when you quit your job. And so for the longest time, I did have a little bit of resentment. Like, well, I wish the only thing I had to do was get up and go to work. Like, I'd love to go to work. I'm just here in this house by myself. But now it, we're in a much, that was like three years ago that I felt like that. Now we're okay. I have my own kind of system about getting me time and, and working out and we are good in that aspect. But again, the thing that got us through that was just expressing those frustrations. And the other thing that I feel like helps Gio and I a lot is every single Friday, and we have for the past eight years, we still go out on our dinner date. Sometimes Sebastian comes, sometimes he doesn't, but we make it a priority to sit down at a meal, even though it's not like a home cooked meal, we go out to dinner every single Friday, unless Sebastian's in the hospital or we're like on vacation or something, but we always go out and we have dinner and we just talk and kind of date each other again, as silly as that sounds. And we'll go home and we'll watch a movie or, you know, whatever, just relax together. I don't know how, because I know other relationships when you have, especially in each child, they become so strained and there's just so much stress and some parents don't make it. Gio and I have been very, very blessed to just have great communication and like figure it out. I don't know how, but somehow we survived. I think the best like, advice I could give to a couple struggling with something in a similar situation with us is just keep talking. Like you really genuinely just have to be open and be like, this sucked, I'm sad about that. By the way, I'm mad about this. You made me feel like this. Like you have to just be open with your communication. And that's the best advice I could give. Okay, moving on. Somebody said, has Sebastian been around um, other young children and how does he react to them? Does he enjoy being around them? Sebastian has been around other kids, but again, we aren't really sure exactly how Sebastian's brain works. And that's because on top of his syndrome, he also has a brain disease. And it basically affects the way that he processes everything. Like people wonder, can he see? He can see but we don't know what the picture looks like in his brain because we don't know what his brain is telling him, if that makes sense. Same thing with hearing. There is definitely sound going in, but we don't know how his brain is processing that sound and what it sounds like for him. So when he's presented with toys or when he's around other children, it's almost like he doesn't necessarily fully interact every single time because his brain probably isn't totally processing interaction if that makes sense and that's not applicable all the time because there are certain times where you present Sebastian with a toy or there is another kid by him and he totally is like oh there's somebody here or like this is a toy but at the end of the day Sebastian does has a brain disease and it affects the way that his brain processes things so that's another kind of hard question to answer because we don't really know what Sebastian is processing and that kind of is the umbrella over everything and anything that he will ever do in his life. When we feed him, it seems like he enjoys food, but is he processing the taste? What does it taste like? It, you know what I mean? If he has the ability in physical therapy to learn how to stand, is his brain gonna process that information and not only process it, but remember it and then take all of those tools and utilize them to create an action to walk or to stand or to sit? I don't know. It's literally like, we're just kind of figuring it out as it goes. <laughs> okay, another really good question was, I don't remember if you had mentioned Sebastian has nystagmus or not. If so, is it ever an option to correct the eye muscle? So nystagmus is that eye movement, that rapid eye movement that you see Sebastian do sometimes where his eyes are kind of like this or they're kind of shaky. And that basically is Sebastian's eyes trying to find something to fix on. He's searching for something to make a connection with. I'm pretty sure that there are surgeries. I don't think there's a surgery to necessarily correct nystagmus. Again, it ties in with his brain trying to process what he's visually intaking. So Sebastian's eyes are probably always gonna be a little bit shaky. 
In regards to his eyelid, he did have double eyelid surgery before. Only the right one took, the left one rejected. We do plan on getting another surgery for his left eyelid to lift up. And I'm wondering if having the use of both eyes will lessen the nystagmus and the shaky eye that he has because he'll be able to use both eyes. Unfortunately, we won't know that until he has the eyelid lift surgery and he heals from that. And then we can get him into some vision therapy, which he was in before, and kind of see if, if that's gonna change. We won't know until he has that surgery, which he's not allowed to have any big surgeries until six months after this most recent heart surgery, so no surgeries for a little while. Another really good question um, about Sebastian is, will Sebastian get much taller? What is the typical growth for his syndrome? Thank you, Peg from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, for asking that question. Um, children and young adults and adults with Sebastian syndrome are much smaller than what their typical age would be. As you notice, Sebastian is five years old and he's only in 18 to 24 month clothes. He's only 16 pounds. And that is actually very typical. He's like right in the sweet spot for his growth chart right now. So to answer that, I don't know how much taller he will get, especially because he is just generally a more sick child. Um, his body is always kind of working and burning calories, if that makes sense. So he should continue to grow, but yes, he will always be smaller. To put it into perspective, I think we know like a 42 year old with CDLS and she's like 65 pounds and she's like three foot five. You know what I mean? Like they are smaller, smaller people. This is another really good question from Kelly R. I was wondering how hard it is for you to find doctors who are familiar with Cornelia de Lange syndrome since it's such a rare disease. It is a very rare disease and we have not actually found many doctors who have treated children with CDLS. I think two. And like all of the doctors and the hospital stays that we have been in, we have only known of two doctors who have previously treated children with CDLS. One of them was many, many years ago and the children did survive and they were able to treat him. Unfortunately, the other case, the child did not survive. The thing about Sebastian and his doctors is they just have to, he is a puzzle piece to them. And I feel like doctors love that. They love like figuring it out. And that's honestly how it's been for us. Limited information and research, but somehow they just figure out what he needs and go from there. So that's that's the best I can answer that. Somebody asked a really nice question that says, is there a particular milestone that you and Gio are hoping for in Sebastian? I think that's a great question. I think that just starting off like slow and simple, I would love to just see him sit up on his own. Like sit up with a tall straight back, not in his bouncer, not in a chair, just like sitting up on the floor. I think we can eventually get there with therapy and just kind of strengthening his core strength. Um, but yeah, I would love to see him be able to sit up and kind of to tie in with that, people are wondering, there's been talk about Sebastian going to school. Are we still planning to do that? Yes. And what school looks like for Sebastian is basically just therapy services all day. So he should have a great opportunity while he's in school to practice sitting up and that'll be a great goal for him while he goes into school. Hopefully this summer or um, um, fall, he'll be going to school. I'm only going to do like a couple more questions. It's already getting a little bit late and I don't want the video to be too, too long. Um, but this is a great question. I was wondering which of Sebastian's physical features are influenced by his disease. Thank you, Megan P for asking that. There's a bunch of geese right here. And the, to answer that question is every feature. Everything, when you look at Sebastian, I know that you can tell like a lot of people are like, he looks a little bit different. Um, he is different because every single one of his physical characteristics are all reflective of CDLS. The way that his hair spikes up is, believe it or not, a characteristic of CDLS. His arched eyebrows, his his mouth, the way that he kind of frowns rather than smiles. He has a downturned lips instead of upturned. Um, and his nose is actually an upturned nose as well. So, I mean, his ears are low set. He's got a short neck. He's got, you know, a little kind of flat cheek, which isn't directly related to CDLS, but I would say 90% of his physical characteristics characteristics are completely reflective of CDLS. They have very strong pronounced features. That, believe it or not, is actually how Sebastian was first diagnosed when he was only two days old um, by his physical characteristics. Because, I don't know if I ever shared this with you guys, Sebastian's genetic code actually doesn't reflect CDLS. He is even more rare of a case of CDLS because he is what they called a mosaic baby. And basically what that means 
is there's a, a certain gene, one of the most common ones I think is like the NIPBL gene that they look for, that is the CDLS gene. I know there's multiple, but that is one of the most common. Sebastian's genetic code actually is non-reflective of CDLS. It is very, very clear and very evident that he does have CDLS, but he is what they call the mosaic baby, a mosaic CDLS case, because his genes don't even reflect CDLS. If they were to run a genetic panel on Sebastian, CDLS still to this day would not come up. It's a, a funny thing about Sebastian. I don't think I ever shared. Okay, I'm going to answer two more questions. One of them is a lot of people notice that Sebastian tends to like hit his head like this and they wonder why he does that. And the truth is I don't really have an answer for you because it's something that he has always done. I think it's just a form of stimming. A lot of children who have like ADHD or children even who are autistic, they do things to stimulate them. It's it's called stimming and, and that's just like a repetitive behavior. So for Sebastian, a lot of the times he is like, we call it bonking, like don't bonk yourself, but he's he's touching the side of his head or he's reaching for his throat. Both of those things we don't have answers to. They are just things that Sebastian has always done. I've actually found two videos from when he was two, one and a half and two years old, um, where he was still like reaching up and doing that to his head. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh. Hi. Hey. Don't do that. No, no. Oh. Hi. <laughs> are you cranky? Did you wake up cranky? No? You were just whining. Don't punk yourself. Don't do that. It's just something, it's just the characteristic of Sebastian. He has always done it. In regards to reaching to his throat, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he feels the vibrations of his vocal cords, if he feels himself swallowing, I'm not sure. He's not in any pain. His throat has been looked at by ENT. Again, it's just something that he Another does. Another common question we get is about Sebastian's teeth. A lot of children have with CDLS, I wouldn't say a lot, but it's, it's not uncommon for their teeth to be like disorganized. And Sebastian actually has great, for the most part, straight teeth. A lot of his bottom teeth are actually ground down pretty badly. They all are kind of go to the left because he grinds his teeth. He's always done that since he was a baby. Um, but I think Sebastian just got good genetics from both Gio and I when it comes to teeth because we have, I've never had braces. Gio, I think he did. But um, we all have pretty good teeth. So Sebastian has great teeth. But in regards to like losing teeth and when he got his teeth, I don't think that is also delayed. That teeth and dental is delayed for Sebastian. I don't think he got his first like sprout of his two little bottom teeth. He got them both at the same time. I think he was like a year and a half or almost two years old. I also found a video that I'm going to post um, where he was like a year and a half years, a year and a half old, and he was just getting his teeth. Can you say hi, Drool Bucket? You got another molar coming in? Yeah. Can you say hello? Yeah. Say hi. Hi. Yes. Can you use your hand? Yeah. That's not waving. Really? Anything else? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. You're so stinking cute. Yeah. So it's not uncommon for children, again, the syndrome affects every single child differently. For Sebastian and for most children with CDLS, getting teeth and losing teeth are also delayed in age-wise of what's typical for a typical child. He's going to lose his teeth and get adult teeth, definitely, eventually, and that's kind of scary because if he loses one, he could choke on it. That's something we're just gonna have to get to when we get to. But yeah, he's gonna lose his teeth and get his adult teeth, eventually. Okay, I feel like that is a lot of information that I just threw at you guys.
I don't even know how long I've been <laughs> recording for, but I think for now, because it's almost five o'clock, I'm gonna, you know, start wrapping down the night, get Sebastian ready to settle in. He needs dinner, I need dinner. Um, so I think I'm gonna cut it here for now. There's still a ton of questions that I did not get to, and I do plan on addressing. I'll maybe do that tomorrow, or like, we'll just do, excuse me, a regular vlog day tomorrow, and then pick up on questions Saturday or Sunday or something, but I promise if you feel like your question did not get answered, I'm going to try to get to all of them. Per usual. Thank you for your love and your respect when asking these questions. I couldn't believe, first of all, the amount of questions that people had. Like I said, there was over almost 500 comments and just the amount of respect that people had when they were asking their questions. It's, it's not very common where you, it's not very common that that happens. I'll just leave it at that. When people have questions about Sebastian, they're usually not worded very nicely. So I did want to take a second for thanking you for letting me be vulnerable and also, also for letting yourselves be vulnerable and asking questions, even the hard stuff. There are a lot of other questions that I have not gotten into that are a little bit harder. Um, but again, I didn't want to throw too much at you in one video. <laughs> so if you have any other questions, feel free to ask them down below or in the video previous to this. And before we go, I'll let you say hi to Sebastian. <laughs> Sir, are you happier now? Are you okay? Yes, because you were crying quite a bit at the beginning of this video, huh? Mama just had to let you sit and do your thing, huh? Yeah, okay, just making sure you're fine now. You okay? What do you think about all the questions everybody's asking about you, huh? Everybody's so curious about you. We love that. Say thank you, everybody. Say thank you, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to particularly add to the video, Sebastian? No? <laughs> okay. Well, all right then. Can you wave bye? Yeah, like this bye bye. A little bit, say bye bye. <laughs> Good job. I love you. See, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>